Originating during the Civil War, the long-standing feud between the Hatfield and McCoy families unfolded in the Appalachian Mountains, straddling the border between West Virginia and Kentucky, spanning from 1863 to 1891. This intense rivalry garnered national attention, sparked enduring enmity, and involved not only law enforcement but also the intervention of governors and the Supreme Court. The Hatfields, residing in West Virginia, were under the leadership of William Anderson, Devil Anne's Hatfield. They lived along Tug Fork, a tributary of the Big Sandy River, in what is now Mingo County, formerly part of Logan County. The Hatfields enjoyed greater affluence compared to the McCoys and held significant political influence. Devil Ants Hatfield's timber business was the primary source of wealth for his family, and he employed numerous individuals, including some McCoys. The McCoys, hailing from Kentucky, were led by Randolph Ole Rannell McCoy and resided on the opposite side of Tug Fork in Pike County. The McCoys were of modest to middle-class status, with Randolph owning a 300-acre farm and livestock. Both families engaged in the production and illegal sale of moonshine and had intricate family ties and social networks. Loyalty to one's family was often determined by blood relations, employment, and geographic proximity. During the Civil War, both clans sided with the Confederates, with one notable exception being Asa Harmon McCoy, Randolph's brother, who fought for the Union in the Pike County Home Guards. This led many in the area, including some of his own family members, to label Asa as a traitor. During the war, William Devilance Hatfield and Randolph McCoy served in the Confederate Home Guards known as the Logan Wildcats. In the autumn of 1863, a series of Union guerrilla assaults initiated by William H. Francis Jr., who was also called Bill France, targeted the West Virginia side of the Tug River. These attacks prompted the Logan Wildcats to encircle Francis's residence in Pike County, Kentucky, where Devil Ants fatally shot him. Notably, Asa H. McCoy was a close friend and neighbor of William Francis. Asa McCoy was granted an early release from the Army in December 1864 due to a broken leg and returned to Kentucky. Upon his return, Jim Vance, who was Devil Ants Hatfield's uncle, warned him that the Logan Wildcats might pay him a visit. When Asa heard gunfire while fetching water from his well, he sought refuge in a nearby cave. However, the Wildcats tracked him down and fatally shot him on January 7, 1865. Initially, Devil Ants Hatfield was a suspect, but later investigations confirmed that he was unwell at home during the time of the murder. It became widely believed that his uncle, Jim Vance, was the one responsible. After this incident, relations between the two families deteriorated. The tension flared up again in 1878 when Randolph McCoy accused Floyd Hatfield, a cousin of Devil Ants, of stealing one of his pigs. The trial for the theft was presided over by Justice of the Peace Anderson, Preacher Ants, Hatfield, another cousin of Devil Ants. The outcome of the trial hinged on the testimony of a witness named Bill Statton, who testified in favor of Floyd Hatfield. When the charges against Floyd were dropped, it greatly angered the McCoys. Two years later, on June 18, 1880, Bill Staton was killed in a violent confrontation involving Sam and Paris McCoy, who were nephews of Randolph. Sam was put on trial for the murder but was acquitted, with the defense arguing it was an act of self-defense. Just a few months later, at a local election day gathering in 1880, Johns Hatfield, who was the 18-year-old son of Devil Ants Hatfield, met Rosianna McCoy, the daughter of Randolph. They immediately formed a strong connection and spent hours together in the following months. Due to her father's strong disapproval, Rosanna fled to West Virginia to be with Johns. A McCoy posse soon followed her, arriving at the Hatfield residence and arresting Johns on outstanding bootlegging warrants from Kentucky. Devil Ants assembled his own group to intercept the McCoys and rescue his son. Following this incident, the couple remained separated, but Rosanna discovered she was pregnant. Both families refused to permit them to marry. In the spring of 1881, Rosanna gave birth to a daughter named Sarah Elizabeth McCoy. However, Johns had already moved on and married Nancy McCoy, who was the daughter of Asa Harmon McCoy and Rosanna's cousin in May 1881. Rosanna's father, unable to accept her or the baby, refused to communicate with her. Her mother then arranged for Rosanna to live with her Aunt Betty in nearby Springville, Kentucky. 
Unfortunately, baby Sarah passed away at eight months old due to measles. Following this tragic loss, Rosanna was described as being deeply heartbroken and never fully recovering emotionally. She passed away at the age of 29. This incident further worsened the relationship between the two families, and it was far from over. On August 5, 1882, at another Election Day event in Kentucky, three of Randolph McCoy's sons, Tolbert, Farmer, and Bud, became embroiled in a violent altercation with two of Devil Anse's brothers. During the brawl, one of the McCoy brothers repeatedly stabbed Ellison Hatfield and then shot him in the back. The McCoys quickly fled the scene but were soon captured by the authorities. However, the Hatfields intercepted the constables and forcibly took the McCoy brothers before they reached Pikeville. The brothers were transported to West Virginia, where they awaited the fate of the mortally wounded Ellison Hatfield. When Ellison passed away, the brothers were bound to pawpaw bushes and subjected to a barrage of gunshots, with a total of 50 rounds fired. As a result of these events, authorities indicted 20 men, including Devil Ants and his sons, for the deaths of the McCoy brothers. Despite the charges, the Hatfields managed to avoid arrest, further infuriating the McCoys. Their cause was taken up by Perry Klein, an attorney who had married Martha McCoy, the widow of Randolph's brother, Asa Harmon McCoy. In addition to being connected to the McCoy family, Klein held a personal grudge against Devil Ants. He had lost a lawsuit to him years earlier over the deed to thousands of acres of land. Leveraging his political connections, Kleine offered rewards for the apprehension of the Hatfields, including De Valancey. In 1886, Jeff McCoy was responsible for the killing of a mail carrier named Fred Wolford. Cap Hatfield, acting as the constable, pursued McCoy and, together with his friend Tom Wallace, confronted McCoy by the banks of Tug River. McCoy was shot during the encounter, and Tom Wallace was discovered dead in the spring of 1887. On January 1, 1888, the Hatfields devised a plan to bring the long-standing feud to an end. They surrounded the Randolph-McCoy home and opened fire. The attack, led by Cap Hatfield, the son of Devil Ants, and Jim Vance, involved setting fire to the McCoy house in an attempt to force Randolph-McCoy out into the open. While Randolph McCoy and some family members managed to escape into the woods, his son Calvin and daughter Alifair lost their lives in the crossfire. Sarah, his wife, suffered a severe beating at the hands of the Hatfields and sustained a crushed skull. The McCoy home was razed to the ground. Following this violent episode, the surviving McCoys relocated to Pikeville, Kentucky, to avoid further harassment from West Virginia raiding parties. A few days after what became known as the New Year's Massacre, Kentucky Governor Simon Buckner dispatched Special Officer Frank Phillips, along with 38 men, to apprehend the nearly 20 Hatfield men. He also offered a special reward that attracted additional bounty hunters pursuing the Hatfields. Frank Phillips and a member of his posse soon located Jim Vance and Cap Hatfield. Vance refused to surrender, leading to his death on January 10th. 1888. Phillips conducted further raids on Hatfield homes and supporters, resulting in the capture of three more men. Subsequently, led by Devil Ants, the Hatfields made preparations for one final large-scale offensive against the McCoys. Upon hearing about the Hatfields' preparations for conflict, Frank Phillips gathered every able-bodied man he could and led his posse to intercept them. On January 19th, Phillips's group encountered the Hatfields on the West Virginia side of the Tugfork River as they were en route, resulting in an exchange of gunfire. This confrontation became known as the Battle of Grapevine Creek, and the Hatfields suffered multiple casualties before retreating. Two Hatfield supporters lost their lives, and after surrendering, a deputy named Bill Dempsey was executed by Frank Phillips. The remaining Hatfields, who did not manage to escape, were taken into custody. A series of legal battles unfolded over the following years as various courts deliberated the legal aspects of the Hatfield case. The primary concern was that West Virginia men had been purportedly unlawfully extradited across state lines. Ultimately, the case reached the U.S. Supreme Court, which ruled that the Hatfields detained in Kentucky could stand trial. 
In 1889, the Hatfield prisoners faced trial for their involvement in various feud-related crimes, primarily the murders of Randall McCoy's sons, for the killing of Ellison Hatfield, and the killing of one of his daughters during the New Year's Massacre. In the end, eight Hatfields were found guilty and received life sentences, with the exception of Cottontop Ellison Mounts, who was sentenced to death for the murder of Randall McCoy's daughter, Allie Fair. Mounts, who had mental challenges, was widely seen as a scapegoat despite having confessed to his guilt. Although public executions were against the law in Kentucky, thousands of onlookers gathered to witness his hanging on February 18, 1890. Reports indicate that his final words were, They made me do it. The Hatfields made me do it. Between 1880 and 1888, more than a dozen individuals from the two families lost their lives, and at least 10 others were injured. At one point, the situation deteriorated to such an extent that the governors of West Virginia and Kentucky even issued threats of sending their militias to invade each other's states. With the hanging of mounts, hostilities between the families began to subside. Legal proceedings persisted for years until the last feud trial in 1901 involving Johns Hatfield. Following the official end of the feud, Randolph McCoy took up the role of a ferry operator and passed away in 1914 at the age of 88 due to burns sustained in an accidental fire. He was laid to rest in the Dill Cemetery in Pikeville, Kentucky. Devil Ants Hatfield, who had long expressed his doubts about religion, underwent a spiritual transformation and experienced his first baptism at the age of 73. He subsequently established a Church of Christ congregation in West Virginia. He passed away at 81 due to pneumonia on January 6, 1921, in Sturat, West Virginia, and was laid to rest in the Hatfield Family Cemetery along West Virginia Route 44 in southern Logan County. For years, the feud became a part of American folklore, with its stories featured in books, magazines, movies, and television programs. Even today, it continues to captivate people and tourists journey to regions in West Virginia and Kentucky to explore the areas and historic sites that bear witness to the days of the feud. In 1999, a substantial endeavor known as the Hatfield and McCoy Historic Site Restoration was successfully carried out. Currently, visitors can embark on the Hatfield-McCoy Feud Driving Tour, a self-guided exploration covering all the feud sites in Kentucky and West Virginia. Visitors receive a free Hatfield and McCoy driving tour brochure offering detailed instructions for locating each feud site that is open to the public.